All right, well, there are some brand new questions today concerning President Obama's handling of the U.S. economy. Just days after a string of bad economic news, the president today said, as he was uh, speaking uh, with uh, Angela Merkel, he said he is not worried about a double dip recession uh, for our country, he doesn't think it's going to happen. His comments came after word that his top economic advisor has decided to go back to his teaching job. And after we found out that he stopped receiving daily economic briefings, which he had asked to receive every single day. It's not happening anymore. He requested those back in 2009. Take a listen to what the press secretaries said about this back then and now. The president asked that this be added each day to his schedule uh, as the country is in the midst of uh, an economic crisis and an economic emergency. Uh, and he felt it was important that each day uh, he received the most up-to-date information uh, as it relates uh, to the economy. But when did the president stop doing the daily presidential economic daily briefing? Uh, you know, I think it, it happens uh, periodically. Uh, it used to be a daily thing with the PDV. I'm just curious when it stopped being a daily thing. I'll have to go check. Again, it's, it's sort of... Uh, it happens occasionally, doesn't happen all the time, uh, and I think that was always the case, but I can, I, I, I can check. I don't have any scheduling uh, changes to announce. Mm, that was a very awkward press secretary moment there. Uh, let's bring in our panelists and talk about this a little bit. Lars Larson, syndicated radio host, and Rob Thompson, uh, radio talk show host. Gentlemen, thank you uh, for being here. Uh, you Glad know, it, here. Th this is a, a tricky one. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, take a look at this, Lars. Do you think, first of all, you know, the answer should have been, it, we talk about the economy on such a, you know, uh, several times a day, given what's going on in the world, right? Yep. But what? the problem is the president has taken the hear no evil approach to the economy. I mean, this is the guy who stands there and tells people who can't afford gasoline, go out and buy yourself a new hybrid van. He's about as disconnected from reality as it comes. And I'm sure that to the president, when he drives by in his economic limo and runs over the fate of Americans who are out there looking for jobs and trying to pay the bills, it probably does feel like bumps in the road when he runs over millions of unemployed Americans and people who can't make their mortgages. But he's not solving the problem and there are some clear things he could be doing Martha you know it's interesting that uh, Austin Goolsby who was very outspoken uh, on behalf of the president's been with him a long time covering uh, advising him on, on the economy at the White House uh, Rob he is there's really only one man standing Timothy Geithner is the only one left on the economic team what does this say about how the president thinks that team is doing well, obviously, things aren't as well as, as, could, uh, as could be at hope, but certainly there is transition in any presidential staff, as we've seen in the past, as Emmanuel has left, so has Austin. But what we are facing is something as, as easy as, let's give it some time to work. Now, as we hear uh, pundits say things are going wrong, let's hear some answers from the other side. If I hear limos okay. running over unemployed people, let's talk about what the states have actually had to deal with. Federal slash and burn for every state across this country, not allowing funding for those that are unemployed, not helping the middle class, keeping the tax cuts for the oil companies to make sure that they can, can continue to drill for oil at a lower rate and continue to uh, charge the gas much higher than we can afford. So let's not talk about the uh, Democrat waiting for something to happen. Come up with some answers on the uh, right side okay. of the aisle and we'll see what can be done. I I'll give you some answers. Let's Martha, listen, I'm, I'm waiting. he talks I'm waiting about go ahead, give it, give it some the time. Go ahead. Give it some time. How many more? One more term? Is that enough of time to get the economy working again? I'll give you some answers, Martha. Well, two Let's start drilling for more oil. Let's have the president clear the regulatory hurdles and start drilling. Almost all the land out there that has great potential for drilling for oil is on federal land. That's within the president's control. That would spur economic activity. He could act on those trade agreements with South America and Central America, which he could push the Congress to finish acting on those. He could do that. Uh -huh. He could tell the regulatory agencies to back off. There's an estimate that $1 in seven of the U.S. economy is spent on regulation, and the president is proposing more regulation. Regulation. And as he pushes energy prices higher, remember, right, they have to necessarily skyrocket. He's look, look, hurting. Let's go. I agree. Rob, hold let's on, hold on one minute. I, I want to show you a, a quote from uh, July 17th, 2009. I, I believe it's, it's sound on tape. So let, let's listen to what the president had to say about okay. the prior administration and about uh, his handling of the economy back then in 2009. Now, my administration has a job to do as well. And that job is to get this economy back on its feet. That's my job.
And it's a job I gladly accept. I love these folks who help get us in this mess and then suddenly say, well, this is Obama's economy. That's fine. Give it to me. Give it to me, uh, he said. And since since 09, since that statement, we've added 3.7 trillion to our debt and lost 2.8 million jobs. So, Rob, I ask you, are you yeah. are you satisfied with the job that the president has done in the last two years? Well, you can say we've lost uh, whatever number of jobs you want, to put, depending on whatever study you want to find. And I can t find my own study that says that we've added uh, upwards of 5.5 uh, to 6 million jobs. So it really depends Baloney. on which one of study uh, you want to look at. Let's also talk about regulata regulatory situations. Let's talk about what happened with the financial markets and whether we should streamline regulations and allow what happened to happen again. Let's talk about the oil industry and the regulation there. The last time we kind of eased up on that, I believe we flooded the Gulf. So if there's regulations to be taken care right. of, those need to stay in place. Hey, if Martha, you want to charge you know a dollar for that, we'll, I think most Americans are ready Martha, to pay that. We, very quickly. I'll cite, a stat he, I'll cite a stat he can't refute. The Bureau of Labor Statistics in the Obama administration says total employment today is two million jobs lower than total employment two years ago when the president took over. That's a stat you can't refute because it came from Obama. And Obama public, would please. be fired for doing his well, job. You know what? The, if this the is his are job, tough, he deserves and to be No fired. doubt the president wants to turn it around uh, and needs to turn it around. No, he doesn't. Uh, and so. Uh, oh, yes, he no, does. I, Come I, on. I think, it, I think America, everyone can agree the president that the president does not wants want to, turn wants to turn around, around the economy. It's a question of how you go about doing it and whether or not what they've done so far has worked. And maybe we're getting a sign that they're changing gears uh, in their economic team. And that may be the reason that we see Austin Goolsby no longer there. So we'll see. Uh, Robin Lars, the as last always, good economist to see you guys. fired from Obama. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Martha. Thanks, guys.